Hello, my name is uh, Julien Brass. I'm an associate professor at Grenoble INP. Um, more specifically, I'm uh, in the LGP2, which is a lab dedicated to uh, uh, paper, biorefinery, and biomaterials. Uh, I'm in charge uh, of a research uh, group dedicated to multi scale bio based materials. And uh, I'm uh, part of uh, IUF, Institut Universitaire de France, since uh, 2016, uh, with a project uh, called uh, Future Cell. And uh, this project is dedicated to nanocellulose. So we, we will use uh, nanocellulose uh, to produce uh, different uh, materials. What is nanocellulose? Nanocellulose is a, is a material coming from biomass uh, that uh, you, you, you can obtain easily and uh, Europe has decided that it will be the second priority for uh, the bioeconomy in Europe. So what I will try to do is I will try to, to start from the, the raw materials. The raw materials could be uh, wood, for example, or could be uh, whatever the, the, the raw materials is. It could be a waste, it could be a cotton. And uh, with these raw materials, we will um, eliminate everything which is not cellulose and we will obtain uh, fiber. So some companies are doing this and they produce this uh, cellulose uh, pulp or you can use cotton, for example. And uh, starting from this, we will try to make uh, nanocellulose. So we have two types of nanocellulose, nanocrystals or nanofibrils. And we start from these materials and we obtain uh, another materials like that just by a, a fibrillation uh, or a, a chemical uh, activation. Very, so you have a process that will uh, convert the biomass into nanocellulose. You can have uh, this kind of nanocellulose, you can have this kind of nanocellulose or even a powder. So you, you can produce different types of such uh, materials. Uh, this production step is not so easy today and we are still uh, in the way of improving it. Uh, we want to produce a new, uh, um, to propose new process and also to, to try to understand the link between the process and the quality of the nanocellulose because you have seen that you have different quality of nanocellulose. And this is the first part of my project uh, Future Cell, so is to understand a little bit more how to uh, fractionate nanocellulose, fibrillate nanocellulose to obtain the best quality of uh, nanocellulose. Once we have the nanocellulose, we can try to uh, obtain some membrane. For example, here it's a membrane of 100% nanocellulose, called also nanopaper or uh, cellulose films. Uh, we can uh, obtain also auto-organize, auto-assemble uh, nanocellulose with iridescent uh, uh, color obtained by uh, uh, cr crystal liquid uh, organization. But we can also give new functions. So we can create a new function at the surface uh, we, that could uh, give them uh, more resistance to humidity, that could uh, be um, interesting to compatibilize with other matrices, or that could for example, absorb a specific molecule or release specific molecule. Or for example, we could uh, modify and obtain antimicrobial nanocellulose. And this is something we have already done in a, in a, in a, in a project. So the second step of functionalization can help and you can obtain this nanocellulose. You, you see they are transparent. So in this packaging called uh, Safe Box, it was uh, in a new gen pack uh, project, which was a European project. We deposit some nanocellulose, uh, cationic nanocellulose, which are antimicrobial. So it is a syringe packaging for hospital. And so if you have a nurse that will come here and take the box, and if um, uh, he or she has a bacteria on, on the surface of his finger, the bacteria will be on the box, but will be killed directly by the nanocellulose, the antimicrobial one. And so another one that will take the box will not have the, 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 the issue of uh, coming uh, of um, taking also the, the bacteria because no more bacteria will be on the, will be present at the surface. So as you can see, the, 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 the topic number three of my project is uh, dedicated to this, um, to, to this uh, application field. And we can propose different applications. Could be in packaging, could be in composites for automotives, 
could be uh, in medical science. So, for example, we have a, a, a French project uh, dedicated to this um, to this uh, medical application, like uh, it is a soft tissue repair system that you will put in your body uh, after a surgery, and uh, you can expect that you will uh, release uh, drugs or antiseptics uh, that will avoid to uh, uh, do uh, once again a surgery or any uh, complication, any, any problem. You can also use nanocellulose to mix with uh, other materials uh, to give a uh, stability and keep the transparency. So for example, here we have a mix of nanocellulose and uh, silver nanowire. It is uh, made by a company called Polyink. It was a collaboration. And what is good is that it is completely transparent and conductive. If you, if you measure the, the, the resistance, uh, the, the electrical uh, fields in this, in this uh, two points, you will have uh, a value. So um, that could be very useful so, um, the, for several applications like a smartphone, for example. So as you can understand, the, the project FutureCell is to start from biomass, try to um, optimize the process, understand what happened during the fibrillation and the production of the nanocellulose. After that, the second topic is to functionalize the nanocellulose to give them new, new properties. And uh, at the end is to use this nanocellulose in several applications like uh, high value added application or even uh, large scale application. So it is really my idea in the project Future Cell, and it is what I want to do uh, during the next uh, five years uh, with uh, IUF.